Most people do not even know what this is about because they have not submitted themselves to prayer. Consistent prayer. Listen to me. Everyone, listen to me. You don't have to be an intercessor. You just need to be a serious person with God and your destiny. At the point you make up your mind in righteousness that I will submit myself to consistent prayer. Consistent prayer. Consistent prayer. Praying in the spirit. Praying in tongues. Consistently. You access the quickening of the spirit. What does that mean? I have taught you many times in this house that the, the way we have senses, Papa Hagen would teach it so beautifully, that you have your sense of smell, your sense of sight, your hearing, your skin for touching and feeling. Are we together? Your tongue for tasting. We say there are five senses biologically, you know. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than five senses. Now, with all due respect, fathers like Papa Hagen would teach that there are also five senses in the realm of the spirit. I agree, but there are many other impulses, and I taught this many years ago, that there are many other impulses that a man has within his spirit that does not have physical definitions. Are we together now? There are various channels for perceiving things that do not have their physical parallels. You cannot give it language. And yet you know that you have perceived things in the spirit. Are we learning now? There is the hearing and hearing in the spirit too. There is seeing and seeing in the spirit too. There is feeling and feeling in the spirit too. But there are other channels for perception that are not defined. Biology does not give us definition. But they are, it's, it's like your body is connected to a lot of other higher mechanisms for perception. Let me tell you, if you pray consistently, you will be able to discern immediately. And, and, and I'm not talking of flesh and biases. You can know when God is in a thing and you can know when God is not in a thing. Your spirit has been quickened. You can shake somebody and not know why you are feeling the way you are feeling. The person is not bad. There is nothing evil because the physical realm only tastes and feels things that are current. Your spirit man can perceive tomorrow today. So you can see someone who is very nice today, but your spirit man is fighting 2026. He's fighting trouble that is coming from that relationship today. You can't, there is, there is nothing exactly that should tell you why there is trouble. I mean, this business partner is a very nice person, but your spirit has already gone and it can perceive impulses beyond the current level. Let me tell you this. That is what it means for the peace of God to protect your heart and your mind. When you submit yourself to prayer and there is turbulence within your spirit, even when there is peace physically, keep praying. Keep praying. Are we together now? Spiritual realities are not like physical realities. And if you do not know how to discern, you will, there are people today with all due respect who have passed on, who should have no business dying. They did not train this faculty. Are we together? They entered a car, everything around them, the Holy Ghost was trying to use everything to tell them but they could not perceive nor did they have the spiritual intelligence to take authority over the situation the quickening of the spirit the quickening of the spirit you can see someone have you met someone before and you just connected as if you've known yourself for five years it's because your spirits were prepared already it is only physically you don't know yourself but in the realm of the spirit there is something about destiny and when you saw it deep called on to deep that's how destiny connections happen let me tell you the truth if you want to wait till you know people physically you are carnal you will pay the price there's a way you can see someone and know, I, I don't know what it is about this person one day after five years you will meet in France and say I saw you somewhere yes truly so you are the one who should help me Judas never said, Jesus, I will kill you one day. Jesus saw Judas. Can you imagine walking with someone every day knowing that this is the person who will kill me tomorrow? 
He said, that which you do, do quickly. And he went and did it quickly. You see how foolish he was? They've already told you oh, that which you would do, do quickly. And the, the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about money issues. I cannot tell you how many people have been saved because their capacity to discern had been quickened. There are people who have missed out on the prophetic program of God. God was going left and they went right. And they stood there wondering, God, where are you? God says, I'm on the other side of your discernment. You need to pray in this end time. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The first thing that happens to you when you give yourself to prayer is you no more interpret life by what you hear, by what you see. Look up. Many people are defeated today because their principal channel for perceiving and interpreting life are their eyes, their ears, their brain. If my eye says it is good, my ear says it is good, I feel it is good, I will do it. Ah, that is a, that's a suicide mission. There are many good things that will land you in trouble. You need to develop other perceptions. Are we together? And it does not always have to be negative. Sometimes someone can come to your company and somebody will tell you, this guy is a thief. This guy is a nasty person. He's always causing trouble. But your spirit man receives him in a way you cannot explain. Because your spirit has seen that there was a prophetic word mama gave on that boy. And say, even though you are stubborn because you helped me, may God always use you. That is the blessing God wants your company to receive. So you can see the boy will come. He's stubborn. He's not listening. But if you can discern and ask God, why did you bring this child to this house as a house help? One day God will tell you. You see, Ba, many things that God gives men does not come in packages that are beautiful. It takes discernment. Are we together now? Yes, it takes discernment. Somebody who may not necessarily be that loyal and faithful, but one day the person will be a contributor to you at a point of desperation. Desperation. I know people today who kept supposedly nobodies in their houses. When they became sick, when they became down, do you know that some of those young ladies, young guys were the people who stood with them if I made up their mind that even if madame would die, even if Oga would die, I would stand, even when their own children ran away. There was a little girl called the slave girl. Her mother gave her a name. We don't know what her name is. But she went to the house of Naaman. You think that she went to that house on her own as part of the spoils of war? No. There was a relationship she had with the prophet. And God kept her there because he saw the purity of Naaman's heart. Now it was up to Naaman to listen to the girl. It takes discernment. Some of the answers to your prayer are in packages that you will never receive if you are walking with your eyes, you are walking with your ears. Who is learning tonight? You must trust God for grace to discern. Because for some of you, the reason why you always fall easily is that enemies have found out that your weakness is laughter. Anybody that laughs with you, even if it's a, a knife is on his forehead, you say you are welcome to my house. Discern. Not every kind of kiss is a sign of love. Huh? There is a kiss that is a sign of love. But there is a kiss that is a signal. This is the person to die in this family. This is the person to go down in this family. I pray for you. Where you have entered trouble on your own. Because your spirit has not discerned from today. May God sharpen your discernment. May God sharpen your discernment. Hallelujah. It was God's servant who said, as they kept going from place to place, looking for land for ministry, they could not find anywhere, but he got to a place and the Holy Ghost told him, this is the place. It was a forest. Same thing with RCCG. Same thing with every... There's nobody who went to their promised land and it looked like a promised land. Every promised land will look like a wilderness. It is discernment that makes you to see the unseen. 
are we together now for somebody the job you are about to quit God is saying stay there not because of the salary stay there because God has orchestrated that by December the helper you see that now you may have been treated bad in the place but stay there now for many people we are controlled by salary when the devil I'm not saying is wrong and I'm not being being uh, you know uh, on uh, what was the word now I, I relate with the pain of people but I'm telling you why many b believers get into trouble is that they are governed by physical things when the devil wants to move you out of the place of destiny he flags more money for you and you can literally move 10 years backward because 100,000 was added to your life maximizing your destiny a call to fulfill God's purpose beloved Today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose. The world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties, but the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing Your Identity in Christ To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, you align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel one of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. 
Jesus himself said in Matthew 20:28, 20, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying focused on the eternal perspective. As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.